In this video, I'm going to be talking about data types and why you need to know about them if you are going to be using the Shortcuts app on Mac OS. Uh, now, this is the fourth in a series of videos I'm doing all about uh, Mac OS Shortcuts app, so you can definitely find the rest of those down in the description if you haven't watched the first three, and also the next uh, in the series as well will be listed down there as and when they are uploaded. So let's uh, get straight on into it and talk about these data types and what are data types exactly. Well, if you did see the previous video, then I alluded to this a little bit because uh, these are all related to variables and when you are assigning variables in shortcuts you need to uh, be specific about what kind of variable it is. So uh, let's have a look at an example shall we. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to uh, the example that we uh, one of the examples that we looked at in the last video which was this one where it uh, just in case you didn't see it it was a very simple thing that when I run the shortcut it asks somebody for their name so I'll type in my name uh, then it asks for their um, location, so I'll tap in the location. And then it just simply outputs uh, a message that says, Hi, Alec, what is the weather like in Thailand, your location, whatever. And the way that we did this was we had these uh, little input boxes where we were asking for input from the user. We were setting a variable name for those uh, different two questions. So we got username and user location. And then we were showing this alert that just says, hi, username, what is the weather like in user location? So that was how we uh, set those variables. Now, uh, I just touched on in that video how uh, you also had the option, as well as when you're asking for these input uh, items from the user you could give it the uh, the prompt so in this case what is your name but you also have this one here which is specifying the type of variable that it is uh, and the data type that is stored within that variable more to the point so the options that you've got are if I click in this one so we've got either text number URL date time uh, or date and time now uh, why is that important well Shortcuts needs to know what to actually do with these uh, these uh, variables and how to handle them. And it will handle them in different ways depending on the type of variable it is. So for example, if you ask uh, shortcuts to add two pieces of text together, um, well, it might have a hard job actually doing a calculation if, it, if you're trying to add a number to a letter um, or or is it asking you to join the pieces of text together or what have you? Similarly, if you're asking for a date and you're getting somebody to just type in a date, if it recognizes that as text, not a specific date, uh, then it won't be able to do any date calculations on that. So shortcuts, in essence, needs to know what kind of information you are providing uh, it to it so that it doesn't get confused. Now, it does try to... Uh, make some assumptions and it does try to correct things like this but it just doesn't work in all cases and so it is much better uh, and the right thing to do to actually be very uh, conscious about the data types that you are using. This will all make a lot more sense with a bit of an example I think. <laughs> so let's have a look, look at an example and as I would just mentioned at date let's use uh, dates as an example shall we. So I'll create a completely new shortcut and one of the, uh, the built-in shortcuts allows you to get the number of days between a specific date. So let's say we want to build that out from scratch and I'll show you the right and the wrong way to do it. <laughs> so let's start with the, the wrong way, shall we? Uh, just to illustrate this point of why data uh, types are so important. So we're going to ask the user to uh, give us a date and then we're going to return the number of days between now and that specific date. Uh, this is a very simple thing to do in essence really in here because we're just going to ask for an input. Uh, so I'll just ask for input like that. And let's say we just want to ask them to give me a date. And then we're going to return the number of days between this date and that date. So then I'm going to come here and I'm going to search for um, time between because we can get the time between a specific dates. That's just a built in action. So we're going to take um, the time between the current date and whatever the provided input is uh, and then in here it says minutes let's just make that to be days so we can change that there so now it's going to get the current the time between the current date and whatever date is specified by the uh, the input there um, and uh, we'll just leave it as that at now uh, for now and if I just run this uh, you'll see that what happens notice how our input type is text now if I just type in 3rd of May my birthday <laughs> and then I click on done then can you see what's happened it says conversion error the uh, the 
the action failed because um, shortcuts couldn't convert from text to date. It was having a little bit of tr trouble figuring out the 3rd of May. And you might think, well, that is pretty basic text, isn't it? So how did it not manage to uh, figure that out? It would have done it, by the way, if I was to rerun this and I was to search for uh, the 3rd of May, but I just capitalized the M. As little as that, it makes a difference. Uh, you can see that now it's figured out that that capital M May is uh, a month. And so it worked out that it's actually 70 days until my birthday. So that just shows you how fickle it can be in terms of uh, when, where the, when it can sometimes do the correction. You must certainly not rely on it to uh, sort of figure out what it is you are trying to uh, uh, you know, present to it, whether it's a date, a number, or what have you. That's a, a great example to, to illustrate that point. Um, you can do a conversion, by the way, on uh, and sort of extract dates and numbers from text. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to uh, do that here, I could say um, get dates from text. Uh, so I'll put uh, get, get dates from input. Now, I'm just going to delete this one because you might think, well, that might be the solution because you could then get the date out from there. Uh, so now if I was to run this one, uh, so I'll just type in 3rd of May like that, um, then it does work and it tells us the uh, 3rd of May and it assumes the latest year. Um, but we still have this same problem that if I run this and I type in a date and I don't capitalize the M, it totally throws it and it can't figure it out. So once again, it's just not even uh, functioning, not giving me the output at all. So that is why we need to be quite uh, specific about the data type that we are using. So in this case, where I'd ask for the input, rather than asking for a text input, what it would be much better to do is actually really specify that I want an exact date. Uh, and then I'm going to revert this one back to uh, time between dates. So this one, time between dates. And then I'll change that back to days again. Uh, and so now, because we're being very specific and we're asking for an actual date, uh, then we could uh, run this one and you'll see that it brings up this picker, uh, date picker, and now it's going to know exactly what date I'm talking about. So I can either do it from the picker or I could have just typed it in manually there uh, and then click done. And there it is again. Or maybe I want to know the time until the, uh, the birthday next year, then I could just type that in here as well. And so then it would tell me how many days until that. So that is just to illustrate really the importance, as I say, of just getting these things right. And um, yeah, making sure that we have got the, uh, uh, the correct data type in. This goes as well with numbers. If you are working with numbers and you, you're going to be performing calculations and things like that, it is very important that you also uh, use here the specified uh, numbers for times. Also with URLs, one of the examples that we looked at previously was this uh, QR code generator. So if somebody's going to be typing in a URL, uh, you need to make sure that the URL is complete. So uh, let's just use that as an example that uh, somebody is going to uh, use this uh, to generate a QR code from an input. So we're going to ask for input. Uh, now this is one where the uh, 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 where shortcuts, sorry, I forgot the name of the application, will actually do quite a good job of uh, correcting. So let's say we wanted to get a URL that we're going to then feed into that QR uh, generator. Um, so we're going to say ask for text and the text is going to be uh, URL. Uh, sorry, <laughs> the text is going to be uh, give me a URL. Um, and then we're going to use that to convert into a, a QR code. Well, Obviously, people might type things like this, for example. So they might just type uh, take one tech.io, um, but that wouldn't necessarily work if it was uh, on a QR code. So the output would just be that. We really want to convert that into a proper URL, or if you're cop copying things from a clipboard or something like that, uh, where it hasn't got the full URL. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, just type in URL. Uh, there should be one in here, which is um get url uh get url <laughs> from uh input one second let me uh get url from input there we go i knew it was there somewhere uh now what this will do is it will actually try to make the url uh complete so if i just type in for example www dot uh take one 
tech.io, uh, which is not a complete URL in the true sense of the word. But if I click on done here, then you can see how it's added in that HTTP uh, colon backslash backslash to the front. So then if that was going to be fed into something else that required that full uh, URL, uh, then uh, that's how we would do that. So for example, if I was to just then add in this QR code uh, section here like this, um, that would now uh, allow me to put in some text so if I run this again, I'll put in my text like that and then click on done. Whoops, click on done rather than enter. <laughs> click on done. Uh, and then you can see that it's basically taken that short form uh, text that I entered. It's converted it into a complete URL and uh, you'll have to take my word for it. That <laughs> QR code would then link to the uh, my web page. So all of that is to explain the uh, necessity for uh, naming your data types correctly or assigning data types correctly and make sure that if you are working with dates, you're using the date data type, <laughs> the text data type for text and so on and so forth. Uh, this may seem triv trivial at the moment. Oh, hopefully that little example that showed you that it wasn't, uh, but it will all be important when we are building out some more complex uh, actions and uh, shortcuts further on in this video series. So the idea of uh, these initial videos is just really to lay, lay the uh, foundations uh, to allow us to build something a lot uh, better and uh, uh, more useful as we go on because certainly some of the things I've been doing so far have not been entirely useful. They've been more uh, just funny little silly things. But having said that, I'm sure you have uh, built some more uh, yourself uh, or maybe you've tried out some of the uh, ones that you can download from the gallery. And if you have, you may be thinking about other ways to trigger them. And so we're going to take a little break from uh, Shortcuts itself. And in the next video, which is coming up right now, I'm going to show you how you can trigger all of these from the Stream Deck. We all love Stream Deck, don't we? 